Hi everyone, welcome to Base the World. Today we are continuing our base collection journey and in this video we're looking at the best bases a thousand bucks can buy you. But not just the best bases, we're also looking into best two and three instrument base collections you can buy for a grand. And if you watch this video to the end, I will tell you what I would buy for a thousand bucks today. This episode is once again sponsored by our friends at Toman. So let's open the web shop and see what a thousand bucks can buy us there. And as always, all bases mentioned in this videos are listed and linked in the video description below. I want to start this with a one base collection, which normal people would probably just call a base. An absolute winner in this price range is the Cord Elric NJS4. We've reviewed this recently and it stands out on many levels. Yes, it's based on the jazz bass, but it has all the advantages of a modern design. 24 frets plus zero fret, an angled headstock, a versatile onboard preamp and just overall a very, very good sound. <laughs> If you want to go for an original Fender instead, surprisingly there aren't many jazz spaces in this price range, but I think I found something even cooler. The Fender Ventera 60s Mustang is a great choice if you like short scale basses. It's not just super comfortable to play, it also has a unique and interesting sound. I love my Mustang. This one's a little bit different. It's from the pawn shops years from a few years ago, but it's a Mustang nonetheless. And these are tons of fun to play and sound amazing, especially if you're looking for a vintage sound that's not the classic jazz or P bass. Now let's move on from the traditionals and have a look at a more modern classic. Another great choice would be the BTB845, a 5-string neck through Ibanez BTB with a 35-inch scale and a super solid low B. If you spend a bit more money, you can even get the BTB605MS with fan frets. We had this one here for a review and it was stunning. Ibanez developed new pickups for this model. You can't really swap them out for anything else if that's something you like to do, but honestly, I don't see the need. This is a great bass. <laughs> I want to add one more bass that is a little bit below our budget, but I think it really deserves a mention here too. The Tribute L2000 by GNL, the last company Leo Fender co-founded in his life. For me, the L2000 is a culmination of all basses Leo invented in his career. First passive basses at Fender, then active humbucker driven ones at Music Man, but here he merged it all together in the most versatile passive bass on the market. It has two humbuckers and a passive bass and treble boost. This bass has a special place in my heart. When I used to work in the retail, I saw truckloads of those. Of course, there are tons of other basses that could be mentioned here, something like Sandberg Elektras, different Sire basses, Warwick's LTDs, but we don't have time for that. So instead, please let me know in the comments below what's the most impressive bass that you've ever tried for a thousand dollars or euros. I really love uh, to read your recommendations. Now let's move on to the two bass collection. Of course, I think it's absolutely worth it to drop the entire budget on a single instrument to get the best quality possible. But budget instruments have, especially in the past 10, 20 years, become so incredibly good that you're not really missing out on much. So let's see uh, what this budget can get us with two bases. One base we rarely talk about on this channel but absolutely deserves to be highlighted is the Yamaha BB434. I have a soft spot for these BB bases. Yes, they're basically P bases or PJ in this case, but they have a unique body design and sound really good. This is a great base if you like classic sounds but don't necessarily want to go for a Fender. And I would combine this with a Harley Benton Enhanced MJ4. This is clearly inspired by the Sandberg California TM4 but costs only a fraction of these German-made modern jazz bases. This one looks Looks old school, Marcus Millerish, and sounds funky as hell, but they're equally popular amongst rock players. The Yamaha and the Harley Benton are great set if you want to go rather classic, but that might not be everyone's taste. So let's explore something a little bit also classic, but a, on a completely different level. My first pick here is the Epiphone Thunderbird 60s model. The Thunderbird is some sort of a personified design flaw, which culminates in an amazing looking rock bass, which is especially popular amongst very tall players. When every bass looks like a ukulele on you, the Thunderbird is your bass. And these relatively new 60s models with their chrome covers 
on the pickups did all the heavy lifting for Epiphone since they came out. These bases are special, but if you dig the tone and can handle the neck dive, this is the best bass you can get in this price range. I would combine this with a Gretsch G2220 Junior set too, preferably the one in Torino Green. I haven't played one myself, but it was recommended multiple times under the $500 bass collection video, so I'm confident this is a decent bass. It's a short scale and it looks super cool. This and the Thunderbird, uh, yes, absolutely, where can I sign up? And the last two collection bass set uh, is for the rather modern versatile player. My first pick here is the Marcus Miller V3 from Sire, a modern active jazz bass with an incredible quality for its price. Sire is dominating the sub $1000 market for years now, so no list in this range without the mention of one of their basses. And I would combine this with a Sterling by Music Man Stingray 5HH, a bass that's never boring and surprisingly also never really out of place. It's loud and powerful, but has been established as a classic in all music styles. The final category is our three bass collection, and yes, of course, for this we have to look for budget bases, but again there's absolutely no shame in buying affordable instruments. Yes, more expensive ones usually have a higher quality and less flaws, but there are standouts in every price range and you can find very affordable bases which are incredibly good and definitely can compete with a lot of instruments a lot more expensive. Especially if we once again start this off with a Marcus Miller bass. One of my favorite side designs is the D5 Alder in Butterscotch Blonde. I love early 50s P basses and this is a modern interpretation of this very basic one pickup classic. I would combine this with a Harley Benton MV4 PJ Goto, a bass we also reviewed a few weeks ago that totally blew my mind. Yes, they are a bit heavy, but the sound speaks for itself. We have enough budget left to combine this with pretty much any Harley Benton bass and even some Squires and even uh, some Marcus Millers. But since we already have a classic PJ and, and a P bass, let's uh, go for something a little bit more special. The Harley Benton beat bass seems like a good choice for this set. It's based on the Höfner Beetle bass and yes, this brand is actually called Höfner. And it's a great addition to stay within the traditional style but add something very different. These are short scales with a very special sound. Just put some decent flats on these and you're good to go. I'm happy with that, but what if you rather want to go for some originals? I mean, we have a thousand bucks and for that we can of course also get some squires. The classic vibe series is where we add in this price range. Let's go for the 70s version. These are very decent bases and there's a lot to achieve if you decide to replace the pickups later down the line. And there's also a Mustang in the series, a short scale P bass with a very interesting vibe. These two bases ate up most of our budget, but fortunately there's always a Harley Benton, uh, no matter how small the remaining funds are. And uh, this one, uh, I've mentioned it before, I will definitely mention it again because it's just a super cool bass. The Kahuna CLU Ukulele. Yes, it's even shorter than a short scale and yes, this feels very different compared to a normal bass, but they sound great and are a lot of fun to play. It's also the perfect travel and couch bass. For the final set, let's leave the classic basses behind us and look into models that are five strings, active basses and just everything that's a little bit different. Ibanez makes an affordable six string, the SR306EB. There's even a cheaper one, but this one should be fine within our budget. Six strings clearly aren't for everyone, but if the extended range is your thing, this is one of the most affordable decent options out there. I would combine this with one of the Harley Benton JP models. Something like this JP55 OP in Sunburst. 24 frets, a roasted maple neck, great ergonomics and an, in my opinion, even better sound. This is a cool 5 string, so let's go for it. And I see no reason why we shouldn't throw a fretless in this set. 6 string plays are usually rather the experimental type, so fretless could be right up their alley. The HPC 2005 FL. This is a neck through plays from Harley Benton and it seems like the best choice within our remaining budget. The 
that's it. Or thousand dollars or euros or just bucks uh, base collection. And now there's just one question left. What would you do with a thousand bucks if you could spend them on a base today or bases? Please let me know in the comments below. And now here's my pick. Usually, of course, it would be the Code Eric NJS, which I think is the best base of everything I've mentioned today. But I have enough jazz bases, so I don't really need it. So even if it's below the budget, I would definitely go for the Thunderbird the 60s uh, from Epiphone. These are fantastic bases. I, I don't have a Thunderbird. I love Thunderbirds. So um, that's my pick. And that's the video. Thanks so much for watching. Please like this and subscribe to our channel. We will definitely do more of those. And uh, please also let me know in the comments below what other episodes you want me to do. I think we should move on to pedals next, but uh, let me know your thoughts. That's it. Thanks for watching and bye bye. Facebook.